Welcome back. Next of kin is a legal term that refers to the closest living relatives of a person. They are typically the people who are responsible for making decisions about the person's care and estate in the event of their death or incapacitation. Making your spouse your next of kin is a good start to protecting your family. But there are other steps that you can take to ensure that your family is protected in the event of death or incapacitation. So tonight, we are asking, is making your spouse your next of kin enough to protect your family? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 080, 081 rather, 80384-63. Ladies, mm. I feel like we've had this, this, this conversation mm. before. I remember, um, I think it was sometime this year. We've mm. had this conversation uh, on Twitter this year and uh, similar mm. conversation last year. Right, where some men were saying, you know what, that their wives um, or their wife is in their next of kin, right? They would rather um, allocate some of their, um, their properties or anything belonging to them to their mother or their extended, extended family. And a lot of people had so many things to say. Some of the takes I was seeing, I was, just, I was like, hmm, please, is your spouse... Not your next of kin. I mean, you, when you get married, I believe you become one mm -hmm. with a person. And it is your sole responsibility to make sure that your family is covered, not just your wife or not just your children. It extends to both your wife and your children. And then when we talk about, um, when we talk about next of kin, there are different priorities of next of kin, right? The top priority that is being recognized is your spouse and then your children. So it's either your biological children or adopted children. Then the middle priority are um, your parents and then your siblings. siblings. Then the last priority you can talk about maybe Friends. an uncle. Mm -hmm. So typically they, they, they like to look at your blood relatives, right, before you, you, even move, you even move outside of that. But I would like to get your take on that. Okay, so um, I think that um, having next of kin um, for financial or for banking or insurance um, reasons, it's mostly, or let, let me say it's more administrative mm. rather than for inheritance purpose. Um, I think it is important that um, people even understand the, the, the rules around next of kin. Yes, where there is, um, where there is um, an interstate, like there is no will, or anything, the law is clear, you know, um, they would favor the spouse or whatever, but where there is a will, what the, the person who inherits is the designated beneficiary that is clearly stated. Um, we find that some people make their next of kin, their children, that's minor people who actually can't inherit. So by law, well, a bank may say that, okay, you know what, we're gonna, your next of kin is wherever you put. Maybe in an emergency, that's who they call. But does that necessarily guarantee that that's who they're going to give your money to? Not necessarily. So people need to be clear and people need to ask questions now as to, is that enough to protect your spouse? It depends on the document you, 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 I mean, it depends on what your objectives and what you want to achieve. If you want to achieve financial protection or the protection of your wealth for your spouse and your loved ones, then you need to look at the broader picture, have a will, have a trust. Mm. That's very important. It's not enough for you to say, oh, a next of kin will take care of, because a next of kin, anyone can contest that. Yeah. You understand? So if your next of kin is not even definitive enough, so people can present and say they bear the same name and all that. So, I mean, who, whose fault would that be if there is chaos or there is anything? So people should look at the broader picture. People should stop thinking, oh, when you talk about next of kin or when you talk about will, somebody is wishing you to die. Mm -hmm. No, nobody wants you to die. But the honest truth is people will die. Mm -hmm. We will all die. So it's important to even embrace, you know, the fact that we will die and start making preparation towards it. People can't just bring families or have children and not, you know, be responsible towards them. If you want to be truly responsible, now is the time to have the conversation, to sit your spouse down. But again, um, about what you said, I want to look at the flip side of it. Yeah. In, an, in, in a medical situation, 
you have a next of kin with your medical power of attorney. Mm -hmm. Now, some people don't have the capacity to make decisions when a life is involved. If you know that you have a spouse that cannot make that decision, why burden them with it? Mm. Why? Mm. I, I, I don't think it's necessary just because you want to fit a certain narrative. I would rather have, I would rather put down the name of someone that I know can make informed decisions, you know, when it comes to my health. Because don't forget, I'm incapacitated. I can't make those decisions for myself. So I want someone who is able to listen to what the medical um, practitioners are saying mm -hmm. and able to ask questions to say, oh, okay, if we take this option, what happens? You... But if you take someone that is already agitated, they can't even function because they are so overwhelmed. And I think that's a burden. In panic on... mode. Exactly. I think that's <laughs> a burden on them. So let's remove sentiments. And yes, you owe your spouse. Yes, your spouse should be able to make decisions for you when you're incapacitated. Or... But let's look at it holistically, not just mm -hmm. in parts. Not just for the financial or the inheritance part of it, but holistically to say, oh, okay, in certain situations, this is who I want my next of kin, or this is who I want making decisions for me in financial matters, or oh, okay, this is who, you understand? And I think it's just tidy that way. Right. That's, that's what I think. So um, there were two reasons, like we had like two anchor stories okay. for why mm -hmm. we even are talking about this in the first place. Um, a lady had tweeted about how had died, had died. And um, according to the Islamic rites, he was buried mm. the same day, probably by, by noon. And um, before they knew what was happening, they had bought like the biggest padlock to lock the house, mm. right? So basically kicking the mom mm. and her out of the house. Mm. And um, in that kind of situation, this is not the first time I'm hearing something mm. like this mm -hmm. right we've had um instances where a man dies they tell the family extended family comes over to take everything mm. and the woman is left with nothing right and this can also be tied to why life insurance is also very important mm -hmm. because when you put when you get life insurance for yourself and your family mm. if anything happens to you even if an extended family decides to move in the, the opposite yeah. direction, yeah. Mm -hmm. your family has something to fall back on. True. Right? Nobody can contest that. True. For life insurance, when you're buying a policy, you need to list out the name yeah. of your next of kin. Yeah. No family member can go to the insurance company to tell them, oh, this is not... True. You will need to prove that, mm -hmm. right? You can't see Jennifer as next of kin and think that you, Emmanuel, or you, Florence can contest it and mm. say, oh, you're now the next of kin. You want to get everything, mm. right? Anything can happen. Sometimes we can't predict what our family members would do mm -hmm. in certain situations, right? We can only hope for the best. And there's one thing that I know. I know that money makes people mad. Mm. Right? People you've lived with for <laughs> years, mm. they could be very conservative, very nice to your family. Mm. And once you are gone, that's the end. And that's because they don't recognize your wife as part of the family and mm. we see that time over and, and over time again, yeah, yeah time and time again and i mean it's very disheartening that things like this are still happening but it is the sole responsibility of the head of the family to take um, um charge of his home right mm -hmm. if you feel like yeah i want to except you don't care mm. so that's fine that's, that's understandable. And the, um, like Diola had earlier mentioned, it, the, the, the problem with insurance is illiteracy, mm. right? Not that you're not educated. It just means that you don't know anything or you, you're not educated when it comes to insurance. insurance. Yeah. And if you feel that way, it's not just you. A lot of people around the world don't fully understand what insurance is about. And then sometimes when it comes to some certain policies, you just read through it, scan through it. Sometimes you need a legal person to explain to you. You need an insurance officer to actually explain to you even the fine prints. Yeah. So you know exactly what you're signing up, what you're signing up for. And I think the insurance companies, uh, when it comes to things like this, they need to do more education. Yeah. I love that. I love that there is education now about insurance. People yeah. are now talking about it, right? But 
there needs to be more push, right? There needs to be more push. The word needs to go out. Education daily. People need to know that they can protect themselves. But just on a side note, do you even know that you can buy insurance for your gadgets? Mm. 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 People don't know people that, don't know. right? Oh, people, I, yeah. I think gadget insurance is more popular than, than life, life insurance, insurance, actually. True. The gadget insurance that people hear about mm. is warranty. It's not the same thing. Mm. Warranty and gadget insurance, two different things. Now, when you get warranty mm -hmm. from probably the manufacturer mm -hmm. or whoever you buy it from, they tell you, okay, one year, if anything happens, mm -hmm. bring it back. But after that one year, that's the end. Mm -hmm. If anything yeah. happens to your phone, yeah, that, that's, that's it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There is education, there's education insurance, which I also think that Life insurance is not the only thing that you can use to protect your family. Absolutely. You can get education insurance Absolutely. for your kids. Absolutely. So if anything happens, they are covered at least for a period of time. Well, anyway, I'm sidetracking. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait for you to like, do all the talking. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, I think the gadget insurance is pretty much the same, like car vehicle insurance. Like yeah. when you get a, a brand new vehicle, two years or thereabouts, and after a certain mileage, you know. But um, yeah, so about the, the, the in, uh, life insurance thing, I would like to look at it from this angle that, um, yes, there is life insurance. But I always want to, um, <laughs> I always go back into the trenches for the people that are there. That cannot afford um, life insurance. Yeah. Right? So for people like that, the woman who sells Pepe, and you can't tell her to open a life insurance, how? Because you fund life insurance with money. Yeah. And she barely, she can barely send her kids to school, or maybe the man is working as a barrel pusher. Because the thing is, the reality of our society is that, yes, there are people who are within the upper echelon and the middle class, like ourselves, that can discuss that. But how about? The man who is a barrel pusher and probably has just one couch or one piece of land that is somewhere and he's been hoarding it his entire life. And he's like, okay, if anything happens, let me give this to my family. So at the end of the day, I feel like the good old way giving our society is still to leave a will. Mm. You know, even if you make your wife your, what is it, your next of kin, it is is still or you make your children next of kin it is still not enough at the end of the day for the average person the easiest way to ensure or to take care of your family or your loved one when you're deceased is take recognition of your assets or whatever little things that you want even your clothes as little as your clothes you can say okay so when i'm when i'm when i'm dead or if you can't afford a lawyer find a trusted person you know or maybe something as little, they're like we're talking in the makeup room, something as little as give them access to your bank accounts. Because next of kin, if you have, let's say, again, I'm talking about the people that cannot afford life insurance, mm -hmm. right? So let's say all you have home and abroad is 50000 in your account. It's important that when, when so you have that 50000 in your account and then you pass on. The, the bank will not pay that. The next of kin is there, but the bank will not pay it to, to your next of kin. They'll probably drag you around and around and say, oh, yeah, bring this one, bring this one. But at the end of the day, you're probably still not going to get that, uh, that, 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 that fund. So I was reading up uh, something on Facebook. Uh, not, I don't know if you guys are aware of it. Something payable on death. Mm. I think all of us need to be sensitized about it and maybe go to the banks and inquire, is yeah. this, how does this happen? Because if you, have, if you feel that payable on death form, then you're automatically telling them, okay, when this happens, the person this money goes to is either my children or my wife or so. That way, even if for some reason you have a will and they still manage to chase your children away, you know that that money in the bank, at least bank, they cannot come and do custom and tradition for banks. You understand? And also, um, this is my personal view. Um, I don't have a will yet, as much as I'm advising that doing the good old will is the best way to me. But I don't have a will because the reality is I'm probably one of those people that, huh, <laughs> like I can't even think of death right now. Or imagine Mobad that died at 27. You know, I don't know if he has a will, uh, but given the entire situation that is surrounding his family and his wife and his son, um, it, it, it would be weird. I would feel weird to tell Mobad, why did you not have a will? Because sincerely speaking, mm. you know, at 27, 
at 27, your whole life has just started ahead of you. Yeah. Mm. So I like I, the angle. <laughs> I like the angle that you're taking mm. that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's just take a short break and we'll see you shortly. If you're just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we are discussing the topic is making your spouse your next of kin enough to protect your family. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Our phone line is now open. Please call us on 70 7749 so yeah, you were talking about um, you were talking about something, right? Um, death. Mm. <laughs> I think I'm one person. The reality not, of death. I'm not scared of it at all. You know, I think there was a time. I'm I'm glad you actually talked about what did you call that document again? Uh, payable, pay, on payable death. On yeah. Death. I would actually love to look into it because one day I I was just sitting down randomly and the thought of death just crossed my mind and I was like, huh. If anything happens to me today, what's going to happen to all the money that I've saved up <laughs> and all my investments? All the planned vacations. Right? So when I was thinking about it, my head, what I was thinking about was, ah, I know who I usually use as my next of kin. Mm -hmm. But then I was asking, is this the person I really want to leave this money mm -hmm. um, to? But um, even if it's just one person I put as my next of kin, if something happens to me, is there a way that I can tell the bank or tell the financial institution, you know what, I want this money to be dispersed to this person, this person, this person, maybe 50% to this person, 20% mm -hmm. to this person, that kind of thing. And it, it was just an interesting thought at the time. And when I was done with the hula baloo and thinking about <laughs> it, I, <laughs> I actually just smiled and I said, hmm, so next of you will just be eating good. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about that in the yeah, group and we were like, yeah. listen, I don't care who gets, I mean, I, I would rather it is someone that I know would appreciate the money, yeah. right? I'm like, but I'm like, whoever it is that gets the money, so long as the bank doesn't eat that money, mm. don't eat money you have not worked for. <laughs> yeah. would, I'll be rolling in my grave like, why are you topping my money? <laughs> Did you work for it? Did you send me to school? Mm. Did you buy me breakfast? What did you do for me? You know, so you know. I, I, I think people should just look beyond. Everybody's afraid of death. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we don't, for cultural reasons, even, I mean, religious reasons, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. So yeah. when you even broach that subject, they go like, ah, please, please, And it's please. inevitable. It's inevitable. So just do the needful. I mean, you would imagine that someone with a special needs um, child not making preparation. If COVID has taught us nothing, it has taught us that nobody, nobody has been promised tomorrow. Mm. Anything can happen in the blink of an eye. You can lose your job. You can have an accident that renders you incapacitated. You can leave. I mean, you can just like that. You understand? So you have to think of your dependence. Again, in Nigeria, we're a communal nation. We were about family, we're about so don't throw your family into chaos. Yeah. Because that's that's the that's the bottom line. You leave and then your family there's bitterness, there's fighting, nobody's happy. It's just it's just madness. So let's do what we need to do. Let's plan from today. You get into the labor market, you start earning. It starts and, and with insurance, life insurance. You don't have, it's your choice. If you wake up today and say, I want to do a life insurance plan of a hundred million policy, it's your choice. Yeah. It, it depends. That, I mean, that informs what your premium would be. Yeah. If you say, okay, oh, let me stay within my boundaries. Let me do 200,000. If it is 1,000 you are able to contribute, they will do the calculation for you. So you would actually know how much you're supposed to be contributing. You know? So that's what you will pick pay on premium, but to now say, oh, I don't think I have that money. No, see, the honest truth is nobody has any loose cash anywhere. Mm. You just make intentional plans towards it, especially if you have minors. Mm. If you have, like, if you start raising your family late, imagine having your first child at 45. Mm. You can't, you can't live your life just like that and just think, oh, I still have 20 years. Who said? 
Who said? And then you're still earning. Don't forget that the higher, I mean, the, the more your age, the less your earning capacity. Yeah. So you, as long as you're still earning, you need to be putting really? some. Really? Yes. That's for what, some people. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for some people. It's not, it's not everybody that would be 55 and be at the top yeah. leadership in the organization or even have a business to run. Mm -hmm. For most people, at 50, 55, their earning capacity reduces. Why? More people are coming up the ladder. They have to pay those people. You, you are almost going out. Again, if you are not financially literate, even your pension, and you won't even know what you are going to do with it. Mm -hmm. You will just spend it on maybe you are buying medicine. Because you have one health issue or the other. You mm. understand? At that time. But if you've started doing what you need to do from like your 20s, your 30s, the strain, the burden is not so much. So please, people, let us, I mean, think tomorrow, today. And that is by taking actionable steps. Let's not put our spouses in jeopardy. Let's not burden them just because or like a spouse that wants to have a conversation I, I can't i mean i don't understand why a person will be married and you can't sit your spouse down to say guy sit down let's talk about this thing if something happens to me or something happens to you what's the next what's thing, the next well, thing? Yeah. i mean you sh these are hard That's conversations but you need to have them how can you have a spouse and you don't know where their bank accounts are? Mm -hmm. You don't know what investments they have. You, don't, you need to have these conversations. Because one day somebody will just wake you up and say, sorry, I've seen situations where people, would, people will come upon the death of a spouse and they'll say, well, sorry, I am somebody bearing the same initials with you. I am Mrs. XYZ. Oh, yeah, what do you want to say? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you can't leave things to chance. You have to be okay, so intentional. I have a question because uh -huh. um, when we are talking about inheritance, well, women are also becoming growing up to this place where they're like major income and absolutely, right? absolutely. So um, yes, it is true that um, um, inheritance, as it concerns a man, is more discussed because the people on the losing end most times is the, the woman, woman and the yeah, family. Yeah. But now let's talk about um, a woman who has, you know pretty comfortable and whatnot, and then at the time of this, uh, her disease or you know, demise, yeah. Yeah, demise, thank you, she ends up, let's say she has uh, a property with her husband, and so the part of the property that belongs there, she's like, yeah, I don't trust you to give this to you. So she diverts it to another person mm. instead of the husband. That's within her rights. If they are co-owners, mm. and you see, that's where conversation comes in. When they are purchasing the property together, mm -hmm. so what is the name on the title of deed? That's very important. You need to expressly ensure that the document supporting that asset covers you as a woman as well, if your money is in it, or whether he bought it for you, whatever. As long yeah, as you Yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying that like when, you're, when, when getting the property, mm -hmm. obviously it is Mr. A, and mm -hmm. Mrs. A, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're bearing the same surname. At the end of the day, we have established that it is not one person on this okay. case. It's okay. two people. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, the woman passes on and now says, okay, yeah, you have one half of this, but my own half, yeah. I choose to give it to somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah, she's she's well rights. within her rights. Like if, if it's as long as it is documented. Yeah, documented. Yes. yes. She's well within her rights to do that. There's nothing you can, there's nothing anybody there's can nothing. do about it. If she has designated beneficiaries, included in her will and her trust, absolutely, the court honors that. But if you don't document it, and you're wishing it, the other spouse has 100% has of it. Simple. And I think some of the issues that mm. we have, right, when it comes to marriage is transparency. Yeah. Right? A lot of people are not transparent. And even sometimes I see um, women who are doing so well in their homes um, financially, right? And they also don't put things in place. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. Right? You have kids. Again, anything can happen, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not even saying that um, your husband might go out and bring in another woman and you're going to have a lot of issues, right? Even if that is not the case. Mm. Worst case scenario, best case scenario. Those are the things that mm. you need to think about. Mm -hmm. If it goes really bad, how would my children fend for themselves? If it goes really good, how would they still fend for themselves? If anything happens to you today, you want to make sure that your kids 
are being taken care of. Mm. That they have school fees. Mm. They have um, um, feeding money. Mm. They have things to take care of themselves mm. at least for a period of time. Mm. Till another guardian, either if they are still minor, if, um, if to another guardian comes to care for them, and even if another guardian comes to care for them, there should still be a standing order yeah. to say these funds should be used for this. So you're going to allocate your funds properly, right? Put them in different channels mm. so that if anything happens... So the thing is, I know that we are very superstitious, mm. right? And mm. it seems like we're talking about death. Nobody <laughs> wants to die when they are young, <laughs> right? We all want to live and grow old. I get it. I understand that. And I pray that for everyone. But the truth is some of these things are inevitable. Anything can happen. And that is what we are preaching about. If something happens, right? In the event that something happens, the rest of your family should be taken care of. And I know that sometimes people don't allocate these things. Oh, you want to reap where you did not sow. The truth is, if you don't do it, the bank will reap where they did not sow. Or the courts would even yes. make the decisions for you. They will take it. That's so it. your money is just gone to a stranger. Right. So for this is what I'm thinking, right? There was a point you made ahead that I just want to like touch up on it a little bit. Why some couples refuse to have the difficult conversation. Mm. And I feel that the reason for that is because of trust. Mm. And for instance, if I have a property and I know that ideally I should discuss this with, you know, my spouse and maybe I've gotten to a place, your spouse is a person that knows you in and out. They know mm. your strong points. They know what you can do and what you cannot do. Mm. So if I know that if I leave money in your hands you should be the, if anything happens to me you should be the guardian of the kids or this and that but mm. if i leave money in your hands i don't trust your ability to manage that money mm. i don't trust that you 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 know maybe not get a brand new car or go and buy hair mm. or do you mm. understand mm. because as much as there are people who as much as they love their children mm -hmm. they still end up they just can't control how they spend or their priority list, absolutely you know yeah. so absolutely. because of that most people just have that trust issue or maybe they've just tried to walk that ground and walk that ground and they were not able to get to a conclusion and sadly something happens along the way mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. um so i i i, I yeah. get you mm -hmm. i get you and i i honestly i honestly agree mm -hmm. but again you still have to allocate your phone. Yeah, you have to. You, get, yeah, you have to. You have to. For me, I right? feel like the basic thing is life insurance. Life insurance, yes, it is growing up in Nigeria, and I feel like more people need to understand it, mm. uh, especially people in the rural areas, because most of these things mostly affect mm. people. Most of all these, like in the in the in the city, we have grown to a place where, to a certain extent, uh, we we uphold the rule, the legal rule, or justice. Mm. But in the rural areas, those are the places where they still have customary laws. If you do this one, they do this one. The in-laws, they this one, they they handle all that. Mm. You know, so I feel like life insurance should still be um, the it education be yeah. 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 to yeah. people in the rural areas. Yeah. Yeah. But then for every other person, generally speaking, I think like um, uh, what's it called, living a will. Mm. with a trusted lawyer or whoever that is trusted, it, I think it's just like the, ulti the ultimate way. Yeah, okay, so and I think this is a conversation that we would probably have to take another time another because, time, yeah. I mean, it's um, very needed. But I would also want to say that um, for Next of Kin, please let us know that Next of Kin, you cannot put your minor mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. as Next of Kin. Mm -hmm. You can't. Nothing can be passed to minor kids yeah. in Nigeria, mm. according to the yeah. law, except you attach a guardian so to it. So uh, if you have some assets somewhere or some money somewhere and you say transfer, the first thing they're going to ask is, how old is this person? A seven-year-old child cannot inherit anything. So if you want your seven-year-old to inherit, be very sure that the guardian you are attaching is the guardian of your choosing. Mm. You understand? And you leave standing instructions. But if you keep saying, ah, I've put my children's name, mm -hmm. children's mm. name will not save anybody. As long, I mean, they must be adults. If they are adults, why not? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, anything can be transferred to them. The law allows it. But minors, nothing like that. And so many people have lost 
their assets or their money. Mm. A lot of kids, they have their parents have money in banks. They can't access it. Mm. But then there is like trust funds where you can just oh, absolutely. You know, leave that and absolutely. maybe mm. just attach this clause that until they get to 18, absolutely. Get to 21, absolutely. then they can have access a absolutely. to that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But that's Absolutely. that's that's a good thing. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. I hope um, people actually really do listen. Mm -hmm. And I want to implore the insurance companies to do a lot more education because I feel like that's one of the things that would help in curbing some of these issues that we're currently having. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about transparency, obviously, um, Sansi has mentioned it, that one of the reasons why people are not transparent is because they don't trust their partners. Please... Marry somebody you trust. <laughs> yes, so. Yes. Don't marry for the sake of marrying. Or marry people who do not have financial liter um, literacy, right? Or you're marrying someone who doesn't know how to manage their funds, mm. right? When you see things like that, they are setting a very bad precedent. Because by the time you get married, it's just going to go down here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. if in the course... I mean, if you trusted a person before marriage and during the course of your being together, mm. you lose trust. I do have advice for you. Uh, no, well, I mean, <laughs> you must, no, 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 no. You Counseling. must protect yourself. You must protect regardless, yourself, right? you must protect yourself. That's, I, I didn't want to sound, I didn't want to sound protect. selfish. It's not right? selfish. But you, you, you need just, to. You, have you to. just need to. You have to. Because if your spouse has decided to go left mm -hmm. and your plan is to go right, yeah. Protect yourself or... You have you, to. You <laughs> whether man, whether woman, you have to. That's, that responsibility is yours to bear, regardless of what anybody says. Because, you see, at the end of the day, you're the one in that situation. Yeah. And you're the one who will bear the brunt of it, emotional, mentally. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it, it becomes your cross. So mm -hmm. why not do the needful? <laughs> anyway, thank you, ladies. Thank you, yeah. Sanzi. Thank, thank you, Adiola. Oh, well, it was great having you on the show. So before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. We're watching. We're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> you missed today's notes. Here it is again. Life insurance is a gift that we can give to our next of kin. It is a way to show them that we care about their financial well-being and that we want to make sure that they are taken care of after we are gone. This is by no name anonymous so see you tomorrow at 8 p.m same time same station come prepared <laughs> all right bye <laughs>